Julie joining us now from a much warmer location. And Julie, before we get into the U.S. Women's Open talk, can I ask your excitement level from one to the 1999 U.S. Women's Open for Clay to return to the Warriors? I mean, that was <laughs> what we all wanted to see on Sunday. Oh, my God. My Niners pulled out a win, and then Clay returned. It was the best Sunday in a long time, that's for sure. Got a chance to watch some Warrior games with you over the years. Always entertaining to do. All right, let's transition to the recent news from the USGA. What was your reaction when you heard how much the purse would be jumping with the addition of ProMedica? Well, I went out and uh, started hitting some golf balls. <laughs> I thought maybe I could qualify. But, uh, no, I, I, think it's, I think it's a great move, not only for women's golf, but for women's sports. Uh, ProMedica really stepping up. Um, you know, kind of putting their money where their mouth is. They were a great sponsor for the Solheim Cup. And uh, I, I just think it's, you know, you got KPMG doing um, the LPJ Championship. You got Chevron that's going to take over the ANA. Uh, it's really fun to watch how the LPGA, you know, it's kind of a standalone um, um, tour. And, you know, we have never had any help from the outside. And, from um, where we started and where we are now, it's kind of exciting to see. Julie, when you won your second U.S. Open back in 2002, you won $535,000. But back in your rookie year, Jan Stevenson won in 83, and she won less than $33,000. Did you ever imagine that you would see the day where the U.S. Women's Open champion would receive a check for $1.8 million? Well, I was hoping to, Eamon, that's for sure. But you know what? It's like... You know, Jan Stevenson and the Whitworths and the Carners and the Bradleys, they really set the tone for me. And, you know, hopefully I can help. I helped out in setting the tone for the younger generation coming up. I mean, that's all part of growing the game and, and um, you know, keeps the game evolving. You know, nothing really stays the same. Records are made to be broken. And hopefully, you know, the LPGA purses are made to be broken. Julie, it isn't just about the money, the venues, the prestige. It's making the U.S. Women's Open feel as big as it is to the players. What's the players' reaction to this news over the last week? Well, nothing but positive. Um, you know, not only, like you said, not only the purse, but the venues that we're going to be playing. I mean, these are the venues we should be playing. These are the venues that help us gain our fan base because everybody wants to see how the ladies played at Pinehurst after watching Martin Keimer win his um, U.S. Open, you know, and then Michelle Wee came in and, and did an incredible, incredible job there. Uh, and then, you, you know, everybody wants to see how we do at Pebble Beach uh, next year, you know, because there's so much history. You know, and the more we can bring history to the LPGA, the bigger the bigger the game is. But also, I mean, winning a U.S. Open, I even ha hate to admit this, but I would I would have played for free if I could have won a U.S. Open. Um, you know, it's just a, as a, an American, your national championship, that's a, that's a prize you want to win. Julie, you've tried quite recently to qualify for the U.S. Women's Open. Yeah. Pebble Beach is a pretty much a home game for you. Do you look at some of these venues and think, you know, you, you want to enter the qualifier again because you'd like to be there as a competitor? You know, uh, Shane knows me, and I, I will probably try to qualify for the uh, Open at Pebble just because uh, there's so many years I've wanted to play Pebble for, for the U.S. Open. And, I mean, I, I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't try um, because I think it would be amazing for me to be able to play there. Um, I've played there so many times, and it's right in my backyard, and I've watched so, many, so much history um, from Watson to Kite to Tiger, and to be able to watch um, a woman win at Pebble Beach and raise that trophy would be amazing. Julie, I think I know the answer to this question. But uh, if you don't qualify, let's say you don't qualify in to Pebble Beach and the USGA calls and says they're going to give you a, an invitation into the championship, would you say yes? Would you take the invite? I don't know. I, I would probably want to try to qualify. Try to, I, I, you know, I kind of like to earn my way in. I understand. I understand. Julie, yeah. what, is, uh, what, are we, what are we putting in these days in terms of practice hours? I mean, are we, are well, we upwards I, of five hours a day? I haven't been doing much. You know, I'm getting my daughters married. So, um, <laughs> you know, we, we had one wedding last month, and I got another one in April. So um, I'm trying to do the motherly thing and, and try to get involved, which is really not my, uh, up my alley as far as planning weddings. But I'm learning more and more. So... But, you know, you know me, Shane. I love to play. I got a great group out here in, in um, La Quinta that I play with. Um, I'm trying to uh, make some money for those wedding funds and, and, and enjoying my life out here. 
I still to this day remember playing Aaron Hills with you and you hit a wedge shot and Paul Azinger wasn't even facing you and he turned around looked at me and goes that's the sound of golf right there. Julie Inkster <laughs> hitting a solid wedge shot. Julie we always appreciate the time come on the show anytime. Hey, I love love talking to you guys. Keep warm out there, buddy. We're trying to. That's why this okay. thing is as heavy as it is. Julie Inkster, the great <laughs> Julie Inkster. Hopefully we will see her at Pebble Beach in the upcoming years.